Kevin here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another video. Uh, this is a video I have been thinking about doing for quite a while, uh, and that is one about the topic of cleaning your fountain pens. Uh, now, this could be a rather extensive topic. Uh, if I went into detail about each type of filling system and each pen brand, uh, this could be a two hour long video, and no one wants to sit and watch me clean pens for two hours. I don't want to sit and clean pens for two hours. So, in regard to what this video will be and what it will not be, um, it will be a general overview with tips and tricks and sharing a lot about my personal practices when it comes to the cleaning and maintenance of my collection. What it will not be is a cleaning Wikipedia covering every pen under the sun. Um, I don't have an encyclopedic knowledge of every pen ever made and how to disassemble each of them. So while I try to be as helpful as possible with videos like these, you know, I'd prefer not to receive a bunch of emails asking about how to clean a, and disassemble a specific pen. Uh, many years ago, I did a video about how to spot a fake Mont Blanc, and to this day, I get people emailing me asking me to authenticate pens for them. Now, I understand why folks do. Uh, they don't know where to go to get this information. They just watched a video online and they try reaching out to that person. They're just trying to get help. But I'm not an authentication service, and I don't want to be liable for telling someone what they have is, is or is not authentic. Uh, and with the topic of this video, when cleaning and disassembling pens, uh, you're at the risk of damaging them. And I don't want to be the reason someone causes irreparable damage to one of their pens. Uh, destroying a pen beyond repair, especially one that you hold near and dear to your heart, is not fun. I've done it. Uh, and I don't want you to go through the same thing. So this is my general warning. Just because you can disassemble a pen doesn't necessarily mean that you should. Uh, there are times it could be more trouble than it's worth. Okay, with that out of the way, let's talk about cleaning pens. I used to be terrible about cleaning my pens. I would ink one up, use it, and then just put it back in storage without cleaning at all. And then months later, I'd go to use it again and hope that it would still write. Uh, more often than not, it wouldn't because the ink had dried up or had hardened. So at that point, I would need to clean it in order to use a different ink or to get it working correctly again. Cleaning a pen where the ink is dried up is a pain. It can take what seems like forever. And it took me way too long to come to my senses and my inked up ways. Um, a while back, I committed to not have as many pens inked up and to take better care of my collection. So I literally cleaned each and every pen in my collection. Uh, this took weeks. Um, I would clean a large batch every weekend. Uh, these are just a few of the batches. Believe me, it seemed like this project would never end. But eventually it did, and I committed to have more of a regimented cleaning schedule now that everything in the collection was clean and on a level playing field. Uh, except for a couple of pens that I keep inked up at all times. Okay, this is my cleaning schedule. I try to use a different pen every day. So uh, after the day is over, the pen gets put into this little plastic container I keep in a file cabinet drawer. Uh, it was actually a, a to-go container from a restaurant, if I recall. But now it serves a new purpose. This picture was from back when I wasn't cleaning as often, so it's rather overflowing. But nowadays, I'm cleaning pens either every weekend or every other weekend so they don't pile up, and cleaning goes a lot quicker. When you clean pens right away before they dry out, it takes significantly less time. You can clean five or six pens in under 10 minutes, which is a lot better than hunching over a sink for two hours cleaning 50 pens. Um, I generally clean my pens at the kitchen sink, uh, and these are the tools I use. There is a little plastic cup, a bulb syringe, and a blunt syringe. Um, I also occasionally use an ultrasonic cleaner and a slightly modified bulb syringe. I'll get to those in just a little bit. Um, I make sure that there's something to block the drain so nothing can venture into the garbage disposal. Um, I find a rubber sink liner like this to be helpful as well, so you could set things down without them rolling around the sink. Once I was cleaning pens in the bathroom sink and had a gold nib fall down the drain, um, I had to disassemble the entire drain trap in order to retrieve the nib. Uh, I was very thankful that I was able to do so, but I did learn a lesson. Um, I put a cookie sheet down and line it with a paper towel. Um, this is where all the pens go to dry out. Uh, then I put the cup in the sink and start running some warm water at a fairly low pressure. 
Uh, okay, let's talk about specific types of pens. Uh, first of all, you have your standard cartridge converter pen. Uh, for these, you remove the cap. Uh, I rinse it out in case there's any ink inside and then set it aside on the tray. Uh, then you unscrew the section from the barrel. Um, I am typically not rinsing out the barrel unless uh, you are using it as an eyedropper or there was an internal issue with the pen that you could see. Chances are there won't be any ink in there. Um, a converter will either unscrew or be friction fit. If you're not sure about the pen in hand, then the best practice is to always twist. Um, I empty the excess ink into the sink, or sometimes I put it back into the bottle, depending on the ink itself. And then I use the blunt syringe while the converter is screwed all the way down. Um, it typically only takes a squirt or two. Uh, then I cycle some water through it in order to make sure that I got everything out of there. For Pilot Con 70 converters, um, it could be a bit of a dexterity challenge, but inside there is a little hollow metal rod. I find that if you can insert that rod into the blunt syringe, it does a good job of then getting the water past that agitator. Uh, the same can be said about the Pilot Con 50. There's a little metal agitator in there, and if you can get the syringe into the top of the agitator, it really helps clean out the ink that has a tendency to hide inside that little metal piece. Once I've cleaned out the converter, I will insert it into the barrel of the pen. This way, when I'm cleaning a bunch of pens, I can keep the converters paired with the correct pens. Uh, now it's time to clean the section and the nib. Uh, for the vast majority of my pens, I'm not removing the nib from the feed. Um, I rinse off the nib and then use the bulb syringe to squirt warm water through the feed. Uh, this part might take some patience. The bulb syringes will last for a long time, but not forever. Uh, after a while, they will blow out. Uh, this seam right here will fail, so every couple of years I find myself having to purchase a few. Uh, there are some nibs and feeds where the ink will clean out very quickly, and there's others that will seem to take forever. No matter how much water you push through, it seems like there is just always a trace of ink remaining. Um, if you can see nothing but clear water coming out, then you're good. Um, I place the nib and the section on the cookie sheet right next to the barrel and the converter, and then move on to the next pen. Now, for platinum pens, the feeder tube at the end uh, is a bit wider than on other pens. It's too wide for the opening of the end of this bulb syringe. So I have another bulb syringe where I've just snipped off the end a little bit to make the opening a bit wider, and that works good for these particular pens. Uh, there are a couple of brands which can be a bit problematic. Um, for example, if you have a Lamy Dialog 3 or a Dialog CC, you can see here that there is a long ink window in the section. So if you squeeze water in here, um, all it will do is come out the side. Um, in that case, I'll wrap a sponge around the side. Uh, while this doesn't necessarily provide a perfect seal, it does a good enough job of closing up the hole so that you can direct the water where it's needed. The same goes for the Sailor King of Pen sections. There's a smaller ink window. Since it's smaller, I can typically plug those holes with my fingers, but sometimes it can get a bit messy. Uh, if you have ink which is dried out in the section, that residue is extremely condensed. So sometimes it doesn't like to dissolve quickly. In those hard to clean situations, I do use this ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, they're very useful tools and aren't that expensive. I believe this one was around $40 on Amazon. Um, you can see here how the pulsating water is causing the ink residue to seep out of the section and the feed. Uh, sometimes a cycle or two through the ultrasonic cleaner is all it takes to get some of the stubborn nibs clean. Uh, when it comes to piston and vacuum fillers, uh, there are a couple of different ways to clean them. One is to simply cycle water over and over through the pen. Um, I have a few certain piston fillers like the Mont Blanc 149 or 146 where it is not advised to remove the nib yourself. Um, I find that the fins uh, on the feed are really easy to bend or break off. So for those pens, uh, it requires a lot of patience. 
Um, I'll tend to use a blue ink in my 149, so I get it as clean as possible, but if there's a smidge of significantly watered down ink residue in there, it's really not a big deal because I'm just putting another blue ink in there, and what's left is so insignificant uh, that adverse reactions to mixing different ink brands really isn't an issue. Um, if you can remove the nib and feed from a piston filler, it's important to know whether or not they are friction fit or if they screw in. Um, I have this little soft grip that I use. Uh, the key is to try and distribute the pressure around the entire nib unit as much as possible. On this Narwhal Nautilus, the nib unit unscrews. Um, once you have it removed, I use the bulb syringe to clean off the nib. Uh, this can be a little bit tricky since there isn't anything to really make a good seal with, but it gets the job done. Uh, then with the barrel, I'll use the blunt syringe to get in there and remove any ink. Uh, same goes for the pens with friction fit nibs. Uh, this is a Leonardo Momento Zero Grande. Again, I'm using the grip pad to pull straight out. Uh, you can rinse off the nib and feed, and then again, use the blunt syringe to rinse out the barrel. Uh, with a vacuum filler like this Twisby Vac 700, you typically would just need to cycle water throughout it over and over again. But for this specific pen, you can actually remove this section and it becomes easier to clean. Uh, Twisbys are generally very easy to disassemble. And then when I'm done, I place the cookie sheet somewhere safe for a day or two so that everything can air dry before I assemble everything back together again and put it back in its home. Um, as I mentioned up top, I wanted to give you a general overview on how to go about cleaning and maintaining your collection. Uh, like I said, I wasn't always good about keeping up a cleaning routine, and it really made things significantly more difficult for myself. Um, I'm considerably better now. Um, I will clean every weekend or at least every other weekend. And, and that has made cleaning in general a great deal easier. And my pens are being kept in better condition. So that's a plus as well. Okay, I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about how to clean your pens. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.